what's good? If you're a serious artist and you're looking to perfect your craft and promote your product, follow Hip Hop News, Hip Hop News Uncensored, the Uncensored True Podcast have a very great service to provide right here for you at an affordable cost. Get your product in front of millions and millions of views per month right here on all three platforms. Make sure you email me at dlsmediainc1 at gmail.com or oh god at oh god at hiphopun.com. You'll see both of those emails in the description box. Now, if you're serious about your art, hip hop, RB, whatever act you got going on in the music game and you want to promote your product in front of a half a million subscribers, email us right now. We'll give you a great promotional price. Don't waste your time. Promote your product right now. Let's go. Man, just chilling, just chilling here today. The Unset the Truth podcast with your brother, Old God in his hand, man. If you're listening on SoundCloud, you know, you're coming over here from any of the YouTube channels, we want to say peace to you and we definitely appreciate you. And you're going to have one hell of a ride here on the Uncensored Truth podcast what's going on sam man what's good with you man oh god what's good with you man shout out to everybody watching viral hip-hop news in the building yeah the uncensored true podcast is good to be back man shout out to everybody on soundcloud listening to us shout out to everybody on youtube watching us yeah man we in the building just chilling what you got going on man it was hip-hop's birthday yesterday happy birthday to hip-hop august 11th yeah you know what i mean started in 1973 was just reminiscing back i know it was a, um it was an instagram post that came up and it said a uh, happy birthday to hip hop. Your, your first moment you falling in love in hip hop was. So what re, re, reminiscing, my bad, reminiscing hmm. back to hip hop. Ooh. What was your first time falling in love with hip hop that you can remember? Twins, deep cover. Mm. Big pun, Fat Joe. You know, we know about the infamous one with, um, what was it, uh, uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg? Mm-hmm. I think, the inf- you know what I mean? But they came back, you know, and did it. And, and you know, uh, it's comparable. They both fire. I don't know if you remember hearing yeah. the other Fat Joe and shit. Damn, man, it don't stop. Because, you know, that right there, you know, kind of put me, you know, that's when I kind of fell in love with hip hop. Because I was actually a real big uh, Terror Squad fan. A lot of people don't know that. Mm-hmm. And Big Pun was like my favorite rapper back in the day. And he died. It was, it was painful and all that. You know, but yeah, yeah, that that's when I really, you know, fell in love with hip hop. How about you, man? You were probably what around when I say seven, not seven, eight, nine. Yeah, right really young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine around that time you started falling in love. I remember it was crazy going to to D.C. or going to North Carolina and, and driving down Route 40 with our grandparents, you know what I mean? And them not uh, throwing on the radio. And before we got out of service to where we are, I don't know if it was 96.1, I don't know if it was Power 99 or whatever. Right. DJ Cool, Let Me Clear My Throat used to come on. And I remember just dancing to that, just reminiscing, <laughs> just loving that feeling. Just the, what, what was that? You know what I mean? The rhymes and then the beat. That shit was dope to me. They look slick. They talk slick. That shit was hot. And then I remember um, Craig Mack, Flavor in your ear when I heard Biggie's uh, verse coming in there. Niggas is mad. I get more butts than ashtrays. Yeah, Dude, that shit was hard body to me. I was like, damn, what was that? Right. Little things started kind of getting me really just questioning what this art and what this was. And then it was gin and juice, man. Snoop Dogg. I was driving to Cleveland, Ohio. And I had the fucking doggy style tape, and I had the fucking the it was his. It was the real version, and then it was the instrumental. Right. On the one on the, on the single tape, man. And I remember fucking memorizing that joint all the way to Cleveland, Ohio. And I was like, you know, you know what? I fuck with this thing called hip hop. I was more into the R and B, but when I right. heard Craig Max Flavor in your ear, DJ Cool, let me clear my throat, and I Snoop Dogg, Jen and Juice, man, it solidified me. Happy birthday to hip hop, man! Definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna throw one more in there too. Yeah, um, hell yeah. Summertime, Will Smith. Facts. You know what I mean? Um, that that song forever, man. Especially you know going back and forth to Philly. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And that uh, you actually feel that, and you know, um, having a lot of good times and young. You know, even though it's a, it's, it gets a bad rap, you know, the city, it's a real beautiful city. A lot yeah, of real man. good, beautiful people. And I had a lot of good, beautiful times, Fact. you know, in Philly. Just yesterday, you know, matter of fact, shout out to uh, Nice Town. Yeah, absolutely. I mean? Shout out Definitely. to the people in Nice Town coming out. Showing love, for sure. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Yes, sir. But, yeah, you listen to the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam, man. If you're listening on SoundCloud or anywhere else, we want to say peace to you. You know, we definitely appreciate you coming over here. If you listen on YouTube, you know, please go ahead and hit the like button. Make sure you share this. Video saying, man, let's get this show started off right. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's go, man. Oh, man, this is popping up right now. Now, Vic Mensa posted a video on his Instagram today, and here's the caption that says, I was the Grand Marshal of the Bud Bellican Parade. Hopefully I said that right. The largest black parade in America. It was beautiful. But the Chicago Police Department threatened to arrest me and tow my bike because I had a group of activists carrying a uh, convict Jason Dyke banner. He said, then we gave out 100 back- backpacks to the kid. There's a lot of hate, but love is the strongest ammo. So I'm going to play this video right here, Sam, man. And uh, we're going to get your reaction on this. Let's go. <laughs> Let's 
All right, so there's the video right there. Um, Vic Mensa involved in altercation, you know, with the Chicago Police Department, a city, um, you know, under siege, as we know, a lot of major cities in the U.S. Sam Ant, what do you think about um the video that you just seen and Vic Mensa uploading this to his uh, Instagram? Well, he was out there first. Um, initially, he was doing a, a back to school event. Um, he concluded his duties leading the South South Premier back to school event before he circled back on his motorcycle and um he kind of was getting with a bunch of activists that were out there mm -hmm. um protesting the jason van dyke um situation that went on out there right and we all know how police and how this works it's no it's no surprise it really isn't surprised he shouldn't be surprised because he's a celebrity there were phones all over the place to say it looked like a fucking press conference or something he had his phone out people all of them had his phone out it's pandemonium it's crazy how today we're such a just a volatile day and age where just anything any little thing is going to set it off like you and it's 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 propaganda throughout sports it's out here in the media it's out here in the news it's on social media you can't run away from race in america in today's 2018 we all know the situation that's going on with police and the brutal um way that they treat black males black females black individuals in general kids babies it does not matter we see the situation and you have people silently protesting and they're being ridiculed and people being threatened in their jobs and then you see other situations where people just being threatened to be arrested for protesting human rights right. it, it's it's sad yeah yeah definitely it's definitely crazy, man definitely but you're listening to the uncensored truth podcast with your brother oh god and sam man if you're listening on youtube or whatever platform please go ahead hit the like button for me and please make sure that you share this video sam man um you were telling me about Nicki minaj and little wayne you know um i think you got the audio where you said he pretty much spoke about Nicki minaj and we know she dropped her album and she's been called in, causing a lot of pandemonium you know throughout the industry a real real solid body of work you know um some real good songs out there coming out a few people in love and joking around but um little wayne has some you know choice words to say and it wasn't disrespectful but you know i'll go ahead and, um let's say man you know go ahead and play the audio so we can talk about this real quick yeah absolutely little Wayne um came out like oh god just said and said something let's see what we got what's up man how y'all doing world first of all i just want to congratulate the beautiful queen miss Nicki minaj for the album the beautiful album queen which is today uh to date in my opinion one of her best albums yet I'm not going to go out there and sit on a limb and say it's her best album because I can still listen to songs when she was about, I don't know the age of, like when she was a teenager and I, I still hear vocals or lyrics from there that to me is the best thing she's ever said in her life. So I'm specific like that, but today it's one of the best albums yet. And I don't mean out of her catalog, I mean period. It is one of the best albums out there, period, just period. And when I say yet, I mean I haven't heard nothing yet better than what I'm hearing from that woman. She is such a queen. What a great title album. And um, she's spitting her ass off. She's going crazy on the album in the bar. Oh, God. What's your thoughts on Lil Wayne showing Nicki Minaj that kind of love? I think this, that's real talk. You know, and it's not like, I don't think it's like no shade. And a lot of people probably can interpret it that way to say that, um, you know, it's not as good as something, you know, one of her best uh, projects. I don't think it's her best either. You know, I think he's 100 percent, you know, accurate. But people are going to try to twist it the way, the way they want to twist it. But, yeah, it's, it's a, um so far from what I heard. It's definitely it was it was good, you know, uh, for hip hop that it was done in the way it was done. I would like to hear her do some other things with, you know, we talked about that in another uh, broadcast. But, mm. you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, I think that was a good response. You know, our little Wayne, nothing he could have said, you know, um, he can't really. There's no way you could say it's her best work. No way. No, nah, and it definitely right. wasn't shade. I wouldn't say that. And I'm right. not going to steer toward the direction of saying it wasn't her best work, anything like that. Because people are 
privy to their own opinion. And Nicki Minaj said a little something on her IG where she was just proud and happy, said she almost dropped a tear, laugh out loud and what Lil Wayne said. And he's always been critical to her face about her stuff and things like that. He's just a critical kind of guy. So it wasn't taking the shade on Nicki Minaj's behalf. It shouldn't be taking the shade by any of us. Real inspiring, great words from Lil Wayne. My question is, Lil Wayne, when is Carter Four coming out? Because we've been talking about it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I'm one of the one of the minds thinking that it, Carter Four ain't coming out because there isn't a Carter Four. You think, he, think he hit a block? You think he don't got nothing? Yep. Really? Yep. <laughs> Flash without Why? the fire. Wow. And another multi-platinum rap and trapped and can't retire. Ooh. Push. Ooh. Damn. Daytona. I don't know, man. I'm just the only reason I say that is because you've been free from this um bird man for a while. You can't blame him anymore. If there was something, why isn't it out? Why isn't it not ready? If you I mean, and you don't owe anybody anything, there's no rush. And there's gonna be a lot of people, a lot of Lil Wayne fans are gonna be real critical. But what does he put out? Anything relevant in the last I mean the, the yeah, so what do you think? Like, can you are you judging that based off his last um verse with Nikki? On the song that they uh, did, or I'm judging that based off what the fuck has he put out in the last um, couple of odd years since, since the Carter, what three? What has he put out? What kind of, you know what I mean, body of work has Lil Wayne came out with to call him, goddamn, he's still the best in the game? We've seen him get sick. We see him get in the hospital a couple of times. What I'm saying is, I don't know if music, I don't know if rap is on the forefront of his priorities right now. Maybe he has other things going on. Maybe he's trying to get himself well. Maybe he's thinking about his family. Maybe he doesn't care about music. Maybe he doesn't. And maybe been on he top for a minute. He's exactly. been on top for a long time. I'm mad at him. Yeah. I yeah. just don't think it's a, it's an album coming out. And I think that if <laughs> he should just say, look, man, I'm done. Don't don't look for nothing. I'm chilling. If y'all hear Damn. something, it'll be a gym. But don't expect. I, I, I'm tired of the expectation. Because I don't see it. I don't Count see it. out young money. Fuck yeah. Wow. Hey, man. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm rooting for you, Lil Wayne. I hope to see that card, you know, come out, man, real, real soon. But you're listening to the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam, man. We're going all the way in today, as we do every single day. We're going to outwork everybody is the slogan and the motto. If you're listening on SoundCloud, we want to say welcome to the podcast. I want to talk about this story because I seen this yesterday and I actually seen this dude's face and it kind of actually touched me and it pissed me off at the same time um if you didn't know yesterday it was trending on google that um you know uh, um monsanto which is an agrochemical giant around you know in the u.s you know was ordered to pay 289 million to a former u.s groundskeeper who was exposed you know because he was using this chemical that we most everybody uses is called roundup roundup uh weed and grass killer um now case has been going on um for a while now i'll give you a little bit of the backstory and i get your uh you know your opinion on this sam man um so in 2004 he was uh, diagnosed with the non-hodgkin's lymphoma disease that leaves vicious lesions on his skin you can see it on the screen you know viewer discretion is advised Now he's a uh, um johnson is a uh, um 40 only 46 years old and he worked at this school you know spraying the grounds with this uh pesticide now um Monsanto is being blamed the active ingredient, and I hope I'm saying this right, it's called glyphosate, you know, which is classified as a group two substance, meaning it probably is carcinogenic, you know, um, to humans. Um, and the category includes um, other industrial chemicals, you know, that are, are being used. Um, he actually won a lawsuit in court, you know, um, f for using, you know, um, you know, um, proving that you know, this did cause cancer, but it's, it's another side to this because I want to get into the actual report, but he did win the lawsuit and he is due to make $289 million, but he is going to die within the six months. His doctors expect him to die and he's, he's pain, suffering and agony. What do you think about this? Well, we shouldn't be surprised, unfortunately. This is what's going on in America now, to, then today. You don't see these things happening in other different countries. You don't see these kind of situations. You don't see cancer, heart disease, kidney failure. You don't see these kind of disease and ailments, diabetes. The list goes on and on in other countries outside of here because our diet's fucked up and the things we used are fucked up and it's killing us by the dozens. Now, we can all be conspiracy theorists and say that there's a greater good or greater goal to this evil agenda that's going on. And you, it's going to be hard for them people to argue against that. But when you got nowadays these, these babies growing and in obesity at an all time high, kids getting diabetes at an all time high, people falling for throwing simple weed kill. You can have an exceptional diet and be out there watering your motherfucking grass and still gain something. It just goes to show you that people out here don't care 
about anything but money. And it is up to us to make sure that we properly care and nourish our bodies and make sure that we're doing the right things, even when it comes to something as small as weed killer, the soap you wash with, the deodorant you put on, the toothpaste that you put in the body, the shampoo. Think about everything that touches your absolute skin that can get into your bloodstream and look at the labels and think twice about it. Think twice about what you subject your children to because these are uh, affecting kids at an all time high and the list goes on and on in the proof that goes to show you situations that this this is more and more fucked up but check this out though because yeah. uh, i want to read the back part of this now uh, monsanto argued um in court they said there's no speci- no scientific consensus on whether glossophate causes cancer and they say which is correct there are no studies that definitively prove that glossophate causes cancer and the um the u.s it says the u.s environmental protection agency maintains that the chemical is safe to you so i, I don't understand how they could say that mm-hmm. and then on one hand in court be determined that from using this roundup killer that has this chemical in it it caused this cancer he's getting paid 289 million in court but mm-hmm. now on the back end they say there's no study you know that says that this causes cancer but this man has cancer from using that it, it's, it's, it's crazy it's a perfect marketing tool they they got a they look under underneath a, a loophole and they figure out a way this is how they could sell their product and sell it safely because you have the fda and little things like that that they have to go through in order to even pass certain products like that and this is an easy way to okay well this hasn't necessarily been proven it was almost a study i forgot um, i think it was uh, edward bernays the uh he's a whole Mm -hmm. big person on marketing and things like that that name is prominent out here in america Mm -hmm. we all know the name but he started the whole bacon and egg conversation and how people should eat bacon and eggs and they did a study and did stupid things and based off of loopholes they made it um uh, a fact to show that this is a, a balanced breakfast and this is why you should eat it. And we all know what pork does to the body. And we all know what eggs and dairy does to the body. It is no, if, it doesn't matter what you eat. The facts are the facts mm-hmm. and it, it is what it is. So it's just, it's been going on from time to time. It's a perfect marketing strategy. All they care about is the dollar out here. Yes, sir. But you're listening to the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam. And we're going all the way in today on whatever platform you're watching on, especially if you're on YouTube. Go ahead, hit the like button and make sure that you share this video. I'm going to talk about um, this right here. Um, my man, Casanova, 2X, mm-hmm. you know, was accused um, of assaulting a woman uh, for filming him on the Instagram Live. Well, uh, Casanova did deny this. He did deny this. Um, just want to go out there and say that he did come out, you know, um, and say that he didn't do it. Uh, what do you think about that whole situation, Sam? Man, with Casanova, I'm not sure if you, uh, you know, you follow Casanova too much. But he's, he's dope, though. Yeah, he's definitely dope. Yeah. I don't follow him too crazy, but I know a couple of his records. That, um, more information needs to come out. It's, right. it's one, it's, it's one side versus the other, and you know, usually know it's her side, his side, and then it's the truth. So <laughs> it probably is a little bit of both inside the middle, but it's. Too early to speculate on. I'm not going to sit here and throw rash judgment out here and say that she's wrong or he's right or vice versa. More information needs to come out. Hopefully that can remedy, it, remedy itself and nothing has to happen too further than that. So, yeah, so you that. fuck with Action Bronson by any chance? Mm-mm. But I mean, I know him. I don't have a problem with him. Right. I just I, I don't really listen to his music. Well, apparently Action Bronson was arrested for smoking weed at a Kosovo music festival so he he was on the stage or whatever you know in russia uh, kosovo yeah i think that's in russia mm-hmm. yeah 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 and um or nearby you know i don't know if it's a separate uh i'm sure people will correct us on that i went in america video. though no nah, but here's the video here we go <laughs> Because he acts and Bronson is lighting up on stage right there. He needs to lit, he lit, lit the L up on stage and, you know, whatever. What do you think about that? I think it's ridiculous, but I don't know the rules and regulations out in Russia. Mm-hmm. So I would I would definitely, I wouldn't go to somebody else's. If I'm not from there, as much as I love marijuana, just like the next motherfucker, I'm not going out there and doing something blatantly against another country and putting myself in a situation where I could sit behind bars in another country. As right. ridiculous as I may think it is. Now, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know their rules or regulations. Maybe they're real lenient on it. I'm not sure. Um, we all know Action Bryant is a big ass white dude. So maybe he'll find himself out of the situation. But like I said, <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll, let's figure out what their rules and regulations are as far as Russia and marijuana. I mean, we well, got arrested. So it must have been illegal. Yeah. You know what I mean? He posted, like they said it. he posted bail. So 
I mean, that pretty much, you know, uh, is what it is. I'm going to ask you about this, though, Sam, man. You know what I mean? Um, the NFL popped off this preseason, and we was talking about the kneeling and everything. But you had some more players that continue to protest. You had uh, Malcolm Jenkins from the Philadelphia Eagles and, and players from all over the league, Miami Dolphins players. Some people took the knee. Some people had to pose that it was like this. You know, um, Donald Trump, you know, said what he said. Mm. You really can't take him too too much serious. A lot, he does a lot of trolling, mm. what you know, mm -hmm. obviously he's the president. But uh, what do you think about players continuing, continuing to say, you know, I don't give a fuck. I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. What you think about that? I like it. It's a nuisance. Yes, it sir. pisses people up. And if it's going to do something, at least piss them off. Right. At least aggravate them because they're not. And I've I seen something on IG today. It was awesome because they throw the conversation so heavily on they're disrespecting the troops, they're disrespecting the troops. But what have we really done for the troops mm -hmm. ourselves? I mean, you see the people in Vietnam, the soldiers, black and white, no color has on it. The, the Vietnam vets of Vietnam, they're not really being taken care of the way they properly need to be taken mm -hmm. care of. Mm -hmm. The people in the Persian Gulf War, you have young kids coming home with PTSD. What are we really doing to take care of? our soldiers ourselves but yet you throw the propaganda of the flag you throw the propaganda of them saying that we're disrespecting people that we don't respect as a nation ourselves a lot of the the, the vietnam vets a lot of war vets are bums on the fucking street now those mm -hmm. of our bums the, the the veterans so what are we really doing to remedy the situation what are we really doing to take care of the vets because a lot of them go out they sign up they get into a situation that they weren't really expecting to be in they come mm -hmm. home fucked up what mm -hmm. are we doing for them but we want to throw them out in the forefront of why these uh, these these uh, NFL players, NBA players, et cetera, et cetera, are protesting a situation that's going on right here on our streets. Sam, man, I want not to cut you off. Nah, it's good. Go to the, the original, go back to the original, the original protest. What was the original, just to let the people know, the original protest, what was it kind of about? The original reason why Colin Kaepernick was saying, you know what? You know, I mean, this is why I'm protesting. Cause this is what's going on. Because I think people, you know, kind of lost a uh, uh, focus of the, the original reason. Because a lot of people that were being killed, gunned down in the street and not getting any justice for it. What do you think about that? I mean, you, th you think about it. Colin Kaepernick didn't do anything but take a knee. And when asked why, he brought up the names Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland. We all know the names Tamir Rice and said that they were murdered in the street by police officers and these police officers were found not guilty and let go this is something that us as black people have been dealing with over and over and over again and now we feel as though this is something that's normal and fine this is acceptable and it's not mm -hmm. i'm taking a knee because it's not fair i'm taking a knee because the shit ain't right i'm taking a knee because something needs to be said about what's going on out here and he was crucified for it Whew. And that just goes to show you now it just goes to show you that you got a popular sort of group of people who don't care about the people that were getting gunned down in the street and don't and to the point where it's like kill them let them die i don't care they should be exterminated this 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 is what it says because i mean he could have protested in a lot of other ways you got some people who protest violently you know what i mean you got some people who protest with different ways but he took a knee non-violent protest and this is something that's been going on, you know, um, once again, you know, in the country, we tried a lot of different ways to uh, engage the government and say, OK, this is how, you know, we want to do it. You know, we want to go this way about doing it. We want to try to get a legislation about this. We want to try to do this. We want to try to do this. And everything that we have done has been met with brute force, disrespectfully, whatever. You know what I mean? So it's just like, um, what do you want people to do? If people are saying that's not where you ain't supposed to protest here, you ain't supposed to protest there, the state is not, what do you expect people to do? Do they expect people to continue to allow this to happen? I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I would like to hear you. I don't know you don't have the answer, but wow. it's like I want to hear the people out there that you know. I know some people out there that don't that don't agree. Like, why wow, you need to stand up? You need to work. I mean, Trump said you, you guys are getting paid millions of dollars, you know, uh, to do this, and to me, that's control. You shouldn't be made to do anything you don't want to do. And why should you have to stand up? I wouldn't expect any group. It's not, it don't got nothing to do with the color. I want, I don't expect any group of people to salute a flag that would allow their people to be killed in this country for no reason. And the person who killed them walk free, get paid. I wouldn't expect anybody to salute that. I just wouldn't. I don't care the color. 
it, it's like and it, and it's crazy how they they create profit off it when you had the black lives matter movement come up when it was basically just like listen we fucking matter too let's think about what that says black lives matter which means we're in a conversation of humans mm -hmm. that's it, it's fucking plain and simple but they flip it around and go now blue lives matter mm -hmm. all lives matter i don't think anybody would fucking deny that because i think that black lives fit into all lives and i think that black lives also put on blue uniforms mm -hmm. i don't think anybody would deny that but if the, the, the biggest fucking problem with this is you have a lot of good cops out here that because of a fucked up code failed to talk about the fucked up shit that's going on out here how dare you put up a flag that says that knowing that people are dying in the street and justifying it a, a candy bar being stolen a tape being stolen, you running mm -hmm. from the cops does not fucking justify someone dying. Nah. You feel me? I threw up an Instagram post yesterday. It was funny as hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it was at, but this fucking, this dude kicked the goddamn soul stone out of this cop, dead his back. <laughs> Boom! Kicked right. it. Right. It was hilarious, right. but if that was one of us, if the shoe simply was on the other foot, that situation is completely different, and our children should not have to understand that black people need to be afraid of police. But white kids should not be subjected to Black kids are a threat, and if they come at you crazy, you shoot them. It shouldn't be these kind of, of of subconscious images should not be painted. Let me play devil's advocate. That's good. Let me get in there and play devil's advocate a little bit. What about? So we heard about the situation up in New Jersey, um, where, where uh, a football coach was killed. What do you say to the people who say these these is you got they're killing each other? The animals, people are getting killed. They, they're doing it at the football field. You know they're doing it here i mean i heard a situation you know with somebody uh, it, the rapper in philly it was it was children around a young lady got killed people don't care so what do you say about the people who say that we got to handle these people like this because if not they're gonna they're killing themselves they're gonna kill us they give it a great excuse and that's what we have to kind of own up and take responsibility for our own actions as well because mm -hmm. none of what they're doing is justified but we throw fuel to their fucked up fire when they have control over the media where they have control on how they can disseminate their information and when things like this go on it makes it and just paints a, a picture and justifies the animalistic nature that they try to put us in there used to be a code we had a conversation on our way to philly shout out to the brothers that we were we were just you know what i mean building yes sir and we talked about a code and there used to be a code. You didn't do things around women and children. If you were around your lady, you didn't do certain things. There used to be kind of a situation where there was certain standards that if mm -hmm. you were going to do shit outside of the realm of the civilians, you don't do shit around them. And nowadays, it's just it doesn't matter. You traumatize babies. You know I mean, and we're not going to get too heavily involved into the situation, but it's just it's really unfortunate mm -hmm. how these kind of situations can almost paint and help them justify the bullshit and justify the killings of the innocent because there's no justification for the innocent it doesn't matter what color you are if you're running away the cops are trained to chase your ass bring you down and and do the right things in order to detain you and bring you in but isn't i mean since when is it okay to just shoot to kill you don't even have the you don't even have the right to an attorney you don't even have the right to a trial shoot right. to kill right there's no justification to that and like i said we got it we have to do better We've always said that we definitely have to do better. Definitely. We definitely have to do better because none of them babies deserve to see what they saw. And in in a lot of the babies that see this shit on the daily, that hear gunshots on the daily, that see their dads get slain on the daily, they, they don't deserve that shit. They probably definitely have a form of my PTSD. Thing is, you know what I mean, my thing is like, I mean, we could complain all day about what's going on in these cities and whatnot, but the people who are in charge or whatever, the policy makers, they know. You know they understand you know um what it takes to rebuild economies and stuff like that and certain areas they understand that okay all we had to do to change this around was get these kids a better education you know um and then make sure they had employment because if you got uh, um <clears throat> a teenager who has an opportunity to do something that they love and make money from it and and and, and, and or livable mm. income they're not going to be going out in the streets and gang banging the reason why people are going out and doing this because of the lack of us in the community so yeah i think this government and the business owners in the community as we talked about have a responsibility to in cities like chicago philly newark you know where things are uh, camden where things are real real bad to go into the inner cities in the hood and say okay we got to take control of this situation and it starts with us first and i'm not saying that i'm looking you know um for, for anybody to give us any handouts or anything but from inside the community 
say, all right, we got to take this shit over and say, okay, we got to build up infrastructure and take over and give our children jobs and give them better education and show them a better way. Because just going around and complaining and saying, well, this place is bad and this is like this. What are people doing to try to uh, um, to build that up, to, to, to help these people rather than just complaining? Because we're supposed to be all in this shit together, right? We're in America together. You know, we're paying taxes together. So that's why we got to do, you know, um, we got to step it up. And that's, you know, we already on that path, you know, personally in our lives. It starts personally to do, you know, in our communities is be that example, you know, and bring other people up and show them another way. If you think, if you look at it, man, if you just, you know, look at a drug dealer and not that I'm not glorifying it, you know, but I understand people got to do what they got to do. They're their businessmen. Mm. That's all. The businessmen that, um, they handle their own marketing, their own sales, their own distribution, and they just didn't want to take the seven fifty an hour job or the ten dollar or twenty dollar an hour job. They wanted to do it on their own, and that just happened to be the only, you know, the easiest, most accessible thing for them to do at the time. And I'm not saying that it, you know, um, that it was right for them to do that, but if you put somebody in an environment and give them a, a decision, they're only going to choose certain decisions. You're only going to have a certain amount of them that's going to make it out it's like a trap. Mm. It's only a certain amount that like you're going to have shit that's going to escape. But for the majority, you got everybody that's, you know, just caked up in there and stuck in a perpetual cycle. And they know what it, you know, what it takes to get people out of that. That's why you got to salute people like LeBron James. But, you know, that's all I wanted to say on that, though. Oh, God, are black, are, are, are us as black people, are we cursed? No, I wouldn't say that. I definitely wouldn't say that. And a lot of people, you know, throw that around there. You know, um, a lot of religious sects, you mm -hmm. know, say that. I wouldn't say that black people are cursed. Um, I, I, I would say that, you know, it's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I just think that a lot, you know, um, we got a lot. We got a we 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 came we came from a, a, a real bad situation and we got a long way to go. And we are making strides, you know, but it just right now, I think a lot of the negative shit is really magnified. Like, for example, you know, um, I mean, I'm not even gonna throw that in here for this. This is too raw for you two, mm -hmm. but we'll get it in. But it the seems to just magnify. You know, all to negative stuff and don't, you know, deal with the positive. So that it's powerful. I, I think it goes to a level of ultimate intimidation. It does. They do whatever they can to try to um demasculate. They do whatever they can to try to just um dehumanize anything that they can black because they can it, it one thing that can't be denied in our DNA is the beauty in it. And I, I joke about this with my son all the time, who happens to be mixed black and Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. And he often, I oft, often joke with him. It's just like, it doesn't matter how much vanilla or how much white milk you got in there. You put a dab of fucking chocolate in there and that shit instantly turns to chocolate mm -hmm. milk. That's DNA, baby. It, it doesn't matter. As soon as you put black blood into anything, it automatically turns into black mm -hmm. blood. That's how melanin works. It's just the beauty in it. And from, right. from, from just the beginning of time there's been an ultimate intimidation factor and that can't be denied it's why black lives are being been shot down in the street nowadays it's from fear it's from intimidation it's why you see um the me mass media try to demasculate and dehumanize the black culture mm -hmm. as a whole because it's an, an intimidation they know the 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 um mental advancement that we have the innovations that we've come through throughout time Definitely. it's a shame that our, our our children not just black children but all children don't know the the people out here that invented things that we use on a daily basis that they had no idea have melanin in their dna you know what i mean it's really a shame and it, like you said they have control over the media they have control over the masses it ultimately comes down to us who are the number one consumers in America. I, I don't know the number amount, but we definitely spend more than anybody to start being disciplined and putting our money in the situation because we are not at all cursed, but we mm -hmm. are definitely undisciplined. Yeah, I agree. You know what I, mean? I agree. And that you, know, you make, you make a very, 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 some very good points, you know, um, and, you know, in the community, you know, the black community, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they complain, you know, about the immigrants coming in and whatnot. But that word discipline, they came over and they see the situation and say, OK, in order for us to do this, we got to do this. We just going to go set up since these people don't want to go buy these stores because this keep it up. Ain't nothing stopping me or you. Mm -hmm. From getting a property here, a property there, to getting a store here. Only thing that's going to stop you is bad credit, not having the money, being undisciplined, stuff like that. It's the only thing that's going to stop you. But mm -hmm. when we get ready and our situation is right, we go and we get the property, we get the stores, and we set up these shops now. And, I, and I've even done it on a smaller scale when I went to a um, predominantly white neighborhood and opened up a business. I wasn't stopped from doing that. And I got love out there. Right. Man, love. fucking love. Right. It was nowhere right. near 
the mental mindset that you are right now, the CEO mindset. Right. You were a brother with a dream that knew he was going to be in the fucking pendant, and you right. went out there and cooked and won. Right. You know what right. I mean? It's amazing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you know the you know that that that's that's what we you know that's what we bring you know to the community. You know, um, we we did something with the football team. We know you know something we love playing football when we came up. You know, so we went ahead and took care you know for a local team that needed it. You know, we went ahead and um you know made sure that they could have their uniforms you know for a whole year. Not that we want to be braggadocious you know about it, but those little things like for the parent. You know, coming up with seventy, eighty dollars for a uniform is a lot. They could put that in, in the refrigerator, but that's just a start. We start somewhere. We start with one property here. We start with one property there. Cause then it's like another thing is like, and this is how I like you know, with the rapper, just like we like to highlight on our platform, but like what rappers doing business. This is what we actually want to talk about with people is more so what they're doing in business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean and stuff because it's like this stuff. The youth see, sees you doing it like your son. They see us starting to buy properties and doing stuff, and they don't want to copy that shit. Like, when I get older, I'm gonna get me some property. I'm gonna be like my dad. I'm gonna be like this person doing this. You know, we got the perception now with the rappers that we success is the chain, the Ferrari, this, not the stocks, the bonds, the businesses, the things that appreciate the whole guns and butter conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, this is this is what this, this is what pisses me off about some of the rappers because we could be showing them. You know the other side and that's when we're going to start to see change you know in the community yeah you know i mean period people don't pe words mean shit, and that's just a buck you can tell a kid whatever you want but mm -hmm. they're going to do what they see when you see a person or when you see a kid in a neighborhood where there's nothing going on in a situation if a kid wants a football uniform and his mother can't afford it because there's three or four kids in there that need football uniforms or cheerleader uniforms and this brother sees a kid a, a dude out here with the car and the chains and the money he may not be thinking about that right away but he knows whatever that dude is doing is getting him out of this fucked up situation that he sits in right now yep. so he's going to go and emulate right. whatever he has to do to get out of his fucked up situation and if the shoe was simply on the other foot well we got some real magic coming for y'all real soon yeah. if the shoe was simply on the other foot maybe this conversation this narrative would be a little different but it isn't right now and maybe people will have to see it to honestly really feel it but it is what it is that's coming soon like i said that's an egg for y'all yes sir um but it it, it it you can't blame children for seeing for for going out there and not being able to afford this but then seeing how this this young brother's doing this and going to emulate it so it, you got to lead by example it's going to be impossible for a kid who's watching his dad do what he has to do say you have to get up every morning and and make sure that you you take care of the most high every day you eat the right way you work out the right way you make sure you take care of your body and the family the right way you learn financial freedom and stability if he out here drinking fucking up doing mm -hmm. this cheating mm -hmm. on moms running around at a job having another motherfucker tell him what to do mm -hmm. subconsciously that boy's gonna do exactly what his daddy just did mm -hmm. i had to realize that it came through conversation and never i was never looked at myself as a bad dad i've always looked at myself to take care of my kids at the ultimate mm -hmm. at the ultimate uh, however i had to at right. the end of the day but right. i knew to, to really make some change i had to lead by example i had to shut the fuck up and just do it facts got to facts definitely man so yeah man that's pretty much you know all it is with that you know um of course we can go in much deeper you know um at another time but i definitely 100 percent agree you know with all you know um those settlements in but you're listening to the uncensored truth podcast with your brother old god and sam and going all the way in today if you're coming over if you're watching, listening to us on soundcloud we want to say we welcome you to the uncensored truth podcast from viral hip-hop news or hip-hop news uncensored we're gonna get it all the way in. So yeah, man, that's um that, that 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 that's that's real talk. That's definitely real talk, though. I think so, man. I, I'm I firmly believe with that, man. You got to be independent. You got to teach yourself how to just really be out here and be free. It's not easy. No, no one's saying it's easy, but it it's it's the only way to truly truly be free. I want to segue a little bit, man, mm -hmm. because I'm sitting back and I'm just watching Netflix, and we both definitely Will Smith fans. Right, Will Smith fans like a motherfucker. And he dropped that joint. Um, what's that movie called? That he had on netflix will smith netflix i think it's called i'm gonna figure that joint out a uh, bright okay the movie bright did you like bright i didn't see it yet what i ain't see it yet you ain't put me up dude tell me a little about it i don't like it really and i i don't like it i'm a will smith fucking fan okay he's a cop and apparently they they he it's this alien kind of alien different world and he gets hooked up with the alien right it's, it, it's supposed to have a lot of meaning underlying meaning to it it it's almost i don't know i don't fuck with the movie at all i really don't like it but you can't tell anybody out here that this movie is not hard they got a sequel coming out for it i'm shocked 
Right. I'm quite shocked you didn't watch Bait yet. Oh, well, Bright yet. You ain't see that joint. Out. You gotta, gotta check, check that joint out. I'll check that shit out. And then we gotta have a conversation about it because I don't want to sound like a hater. Because often they, a lot of people, they love to call me a hater. I'm, I'm hating on this person. I'm hating on that. Blah, 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 blah. But I mean, I, I like to just be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wasn't necessarily right. feeling a movie. It didn't. It didn't resonate to me like a lot of motherfuckers did. Man, I don't Are know. Are you waiting for Bad Boys too? I mean, not two, three. I'm talking four. about four. Four, yeah, four. Damn, I'm right behind. No, no, Bad Boys three. Bad three, Boys three. yeah, three. Okay, Bad Boys three. You waiting for that shit or what? I would love for it to happen, but I don't know if it will. Hmm. We were be. waiting on Martin's uh, reboot to happen. That didn't happen. Yeah, you know what I mean, and now that they they said that there were, um, it's a release for it. Right. Bad Boys three. Bad Boys for Life is coming out. They had a backstory to it, but I mean, Will Smith is on social media. Uh, Martin's on social media. We never see him together. We don't see right. any filming going on. So until we see them together and filming going on, I'm going to say it ain't happening. Now, a lot of people, I did that on Viral Hip Hop News because, you know, I'm the movie buff. I love talking yeah. about it. Got me a lot of great views on Viral Hip Hop News. But a lot of people were, you know what I mean, really on me saying, it. oh, you're a hater. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I mean, her recall, uh, Thomas Payne, I think his name is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he came I mean, out. Carl Payne. Carl Payne, my bad. Carl my bad. Anthony I Payne. apologize to Carl Anthony Payne. Man. Yeah. Cole. I'm on Miss Cole. He came out a few years back. Mm -hmm. and, and, and talk, you know, talked about K Man Mark. So I, I thought it was kind of fake that they was coming back. It's like just because of the money or whatever. You don't really fuck with them like that. Yeah, I don't know, but would you come back for the money? Yeah. For the money. And for I'm not saying like money's that. not I all mean, that. Come on, yeah, come on, fuck yeah. easy. Man. You got to because it's, it's almost like that shit was legendary. Legendary. So it was like, damn, you can't be on your feelings that much when you say you ain't gonna come back. Nah, because you ain't like you know how the nigga was acting behind the set. Come and on, a lot man. of people were saying, how would it work without? Um, Thomas Ford being in it, you know, what I mean, shout out to Tommy, right? Rest right, in right. Peace to Tommy. And I was saying that they should really just keep it authentic, say that he passed away, he passed away on the show, too. Always have right. his name live on and move on without him. Don't reboot him, don't try to redo it, anything like that. Now, we also hear since we're talking about movies, Friday, a lot of going things going on with Friday. We all know the iconic Friday movie, Ice Cube, Chris Tucker, and then it moved on to the Friday after next, next Friday with Mike Epps and Ice Cube. Um, rumors going on that that movie may happen, may not happen. We see John Witherspoon running his mouth usually. What do you think about that? Are you checking for the next Friday movie? Or? Fuck no. Say no. Nah. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You know, the first one to me, it was the best, obviously. And they they, they, they kept him up, though. And I ain't going to say that it felt, kind of fell off. But um, uh, Chris Tucker, no, right? Chris Tucker? Nah, it's Mike. Uh, Chris Tucker was in the first one. That was Mike. Epps. So he's not coming back ever. What? It's a lot going on. You see here right. a lot of people talking on why he's not coming back because of the religious reasons, because he doesn't want to come back as Smokey, but they can revitalize that. You hear a lot of people saying that he can't do black roles anymore. They want him to kind of shy away from that. And mm -hmm. he wants to shy away from the black mm -hmm. coach and the black role. So there's a lot going on about why Chris Tucker won't do the movie. Um, there's people saying that the movie won't happen unless Chris Tucker's in it and they just have to bring that back. You blame him? Do I blame him? For not wanting to play those stereotypical you know, um, roles in the movies. Not to say, I don't think, I, I wouldn't say nothing's wrong with smoking marijuana all day. Mm. I keep it a buck with you. But, you know. I, I don't, I, when you can when you can evolve, he was such a young dude. Obviously, yeah. he's not going to come back with his fucking hat backwards and be smoking weed. Like, if you're doing that, yeah, you a dummy. Like, that ain't got right. nothing to do with it. Hopefully, his his character would evolve. I think it could evolve. It would be, be a funny. Drug dealer or something. You know or King like, or some yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. Or with, yeah, you got to figure out a way, but you could do that. You, you wouldn't. Dispensary. He could open up a dispensary. Something. Yeah, yeah. There's a way of evolution. Like, if you still, yeah. I mean, you don't do that stupid shit. You know, you're going to be sitting there still smoking weed and doing all that dumb shit like a young bull. Right. But uh, I don't know. There's a lot of reason why they say he's not doing it. Remain to be seen these are movies that we all love these are movies from our yeah i mean our upbringing and our growing up which also should does that say something about the movies of today because they're very watered down too i know you don't really get into right. marvel you don't get into mm -hmm. the, the superhero kind of shit that's, right. that's dominating in the theaters now yeah but what do yeah. you check it for man do you when you sit down mm -hmm. and watch a movie if you do what do you what's... i'm a hard dude i like the horrors you know um i do like denzel washington movies mm -hmm. when he ever he puts something out but I ain't really, you know, um, I don't really check movies too heavy like that. Maybe like once or twice a year I go to give them, uh, you know, everybody got the boxes now mm -hmm. where they do their thing with them. So, you know, to get me to go to the movies, it had to be something like, you know, Jurassic Park. Yeah. You know, something special, mm -hmm. Independence Day type shit. Word. You know, shit I've been to. But, yeah, well, I'm going to ask you this question. You, do you still think that um, Ice Cube's Big Three is going to fail? When you said that you thought you thought his Big Three was going to um, can, you know. No, I, I wish that thing nothing but success. I thought it was a one a, a year in and out kind right. of deal, and right. he's obviously beat that. Right, it does. It, it is a force to be reckoned with. He is doing his thing without AI. Um, 
I don't know if it'll ever get to the global magnitude that he wanted to. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his his plan is for it. I wish it nothing but the best. Right. If right. people keep coming over there, you know, what I mean, you have your free agents or something may not work out in the NBA. Mm -hmm. If he can continue to get um, premier talent over there, especially from the NBA. And then um, once the Olympics come on international talent, if he could start bringing them in, it's one. And then once we gain um, a notoriety of who they are, it could work. Right. It could definitely still work. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. And Unsaid the Truth podcast has been a hell of a hell of a show. I'm gonna do a quick little scan to see if there's any more stories though before I get off this. Yeah, and no, air real quick, man. But uh, yeah, go ahead. What are, tell them where they can find the um, got the viral hats. Yeah, yeah, man, we got the viral hats coming. They should be on sale tomorrow. Amazon.com viral hip hop news Dope. and also eBay.com viral hip hop news. We are starting to sell promotional packaging. We told you guys, yeah, that it was coming. You can email me at DLS Media Inc. One, that's D L S M E D I A I N C, the number one at gmail.com, or you can reach my brother, Oh God, at Oh God, where can they hit you at on your handle, man? Oh God, at hiphopun.com. Oh God, at hiphopun.com. Prices and services are now in effect. If you want to get on one platform, 120,000, we got a price for that. We also have up to a half a million subscribers. If you want your music promoted, if you want your links in the description boxes of over 10 to 15 million, 20 million views every month, lock in right here to the Uncensored True Podcast, viral hip hop news, hip hop news uncensored. Hit the emails, we'll give you the information. If you're serious about your craft, very man, affordable. Definitely hit us up. It's very affordable. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, hit us up. And if you want to, um, you know, uh, uh invest. It's only for the investors because a lot of people don't want to invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. You want to invest in yourself. This is a good investment. And a lot of people, the reason why we're doing it because a lot of people have been asking us. We want to go on the platform, but we got to make it right because YouTube has different laws and stuff like that. So we just want to make sure everything is going to be done right. So definitely, you know, um, hit him up on his email. We'll leave both links and hit me up, you know, and we'll definitely get you set up. That's a fact, man. You're listening to the Uncensored True Podcast, Sam and Oh God. Another dope episode, man. Shout yeah, out to man. everybody on SoundCloud listening. Y'all hear the music, man. Shout out to the music department. We killing y'all each and every day. Yeah. Non-stop beautiful content, man. Thanks to everyone out there for our hip-hop news, hip-hop news uncensored. We out of here, man. Yes, sir. Shout out. No shout out? No? Oh, shout out today? Yeah, shout out. Yeah, I give a shout out to, I'm going to give a shout out to Rattel SEO, the, the squad, the team over there at Hip Hop UN. Dot com working behind the scenes and um that's pretty much all i got man and um obviously my co-host sam man viral hip-hop news ceo shout out to you as always and that's all i got indeed shout out to hiphopun.com everyone over there working every day making that the best website on the internet hip-hop and beyond shout out to our brother tk kirkland gangster conversation coming out in october make sure you pre-order that on itunes links for that is also in the description box got big news coming with the brother tk coming real real yeah. soon thanks to everyone that support the movement and i think now we are out of here yeah peace peace so you and him walking in the rain baby. you were holding hands and i will never be the same alana what's up girl hey come take this ride with me yeah shut the door shut the door what's up baby how you been you still looking good Holding everything in place. October 26th, it is going down. Gangsta Conversation, the comedy album from none other than T to the motherfucking K, TK Kirkland going down. Make sure you pre-order your album right here on iTunes. Link in the description box right now. Gangsta Conversation, T to the motherfucking K. Get yours right now. And make sure you stay tuned for the head single on that album, Walking in the Rain, sponsored by TK Kirkland. Get yours right now. Holding everything in place like we should.